In tonight's program, a supercar from a shed in Leicestershire. A rock star in our reasonably priced car. And how many motorbikes can you jump with a bus? But first, the 1960s. Now, it was possible to go fast back then if you had enough money to buy a Ferrari or a Maserati. But then one day, Ford thought, hang on a minute, we've got all these cars flooding down our production lines. Why don't we fit some of them with big engines? Now, if you think about it, this was an incredibly important moment because suddenly everyone could afford to go fast. They actually created the boy racer. Suddenly, Mr. Barrington Smythe was going down the motorway. He got overtaken by Barry Smith. And we've actually been joined tonight by several members of the Ford RS Owners Club. Here they are. <laughs> and let, now, let me give you a flavour of the kind of people who drive RS Fords, OK? Your name is... Lee. Lee, OK? Now, standing at the back there, we've got Wayne. OK, now, Wayne's girlfriend... Anyone want to hazard a guess what Wayne's girlfriend... <laughs> A word of warning, though, a word of warning, OK, which I've learned over the years, never, ever slag off a fast Ford, because these people don't write polite letters saying, Dear sir, I strongly disagree with what you said on Top Gear the other it's night. It's like a brick. I yeah, a brick with guys. git written on it comes <laughs> through your window. <laughs> and bearing that in mind, Ford should be worried, because when they dropped the RS Escort Cosworth here, they said there would be an RS version of the Focus. They promised us it would have 300 horsepower and four-wheel drive. And here it is. Now, it is quite a looker. Well, it's better looking than your hair, actually. <laughs> Sorry, mate, but have you got an RS? Oh, I have, mate, yeah. RS hairdo, that. Fantastic. <laughs> anyway, disappointingly, this doesn't have 300 horsepower and four-wheel drive. It has front-wheel drive and only 212 brake horsepower. Still, we're going to be testing it out on our track, but first of all, we thought it'd be a good idea to have a look at the competition. Most obvious contender is this, the Subaru Impreza. So, we fitted it with the Stig and launched him onto our test track. Whereas the Ford is a jumped up road car, this is a scaled down rally car. Turbocharged engine, four wheel drive. Not the best looking car in the world, I admit. And he crosses the line in. Here we come now, one minute, 39 seconds. Next up is the Honda Civic Type R. Well, what you need to know about the Civic, most of all, is that my mother has one. Uh, it's a mothery sort of car, except, of course, for this one, which is a mother of a car. Is it going to beat the Subaru? Is it going to be faster? Crosses the line in... 1 minute 38.06, of the Honda was faster than the Subaru. Much to the disappointment of the Subaru Owners Club here, all five of them, who have been pointing out that if it was raining, it all would have been different. But it wasn't, and you lost. You lost. Anyway, now is the time to find out how the watered-down Ford gets on. Traction control switched on. There we've got a map of the circuit. On the right, in the centre there, there's a G meter that shows us how much G we're getting. Down for acceleration, up for braking, 
right and left, obviously, for cornering. And that was nearly 1G through there, the first corner. It's amazing. That's about as much as you could possibly generate. Corvettes used to generate that much. Now he's going through the steady straight corner, 45 miles an hour, 50, 60, 66 on the exit, foot hard down. Now a really fast car is topping the ton before he has to brake. 99, he didn't quite make the ton as he brakes hard and into the hammerhead. To the left and then a really hard right. It's going to make understeer. Everything understeers. Except the Honda didn't. And oh wow, he's gone a bit wide though. He's wide on the way out. That's okay. Now flat out. Is he going to reach 100 here? Is he going to lift? Is he going to lift for the follow through? Changed up into fourth and yes, lifted there down to 80 miles an hour for the follow through. So he didn't follow through into Bentley Bend into Bentley Bend and again this is going to be the fastest part of the track he's flat out through there flat out still 100 and a mile 102 miles an hour that's very quick the Suzuki Leon is only doing 87 through Bacharach into the really tricky one where you spin all the power away is it going to waste all that power how tidy is he let's look that's very tidy well, there's one thing for sure. The RS Owners Club won't be poking dog mess through the Stig's letterbox after that performance. 1 minute 33.8. That's nearly four seconds faster than the Honda. Four seconds. That's a week. If you're a dog. So, plainly, I had to go and drive this car in the real world. But where? Obviously, it had to be somewhere with miles and miles of empty roads, and that means finding somewhere on there where no one wants to live. There are so many empty roads out here, it's hard to know where to start. Welcome, then, to RS Country. Nothing but the odd woolly maggot to spoil the fun. Sitting here, there's no evidence that I'm in something which can nuke a Subaru Impreza. Apart from the sporty seats and the start button in this hideous steering wheel, which appears to have come from a Southall motorist discount store for $9.99, it just feels like a normal three-door Focus and um, sounds like one too. And like a normal Focus, there's no cup holder. There's nowhere to put my can of piping hot coffee. <sighs> Even when you bury the throttle into the Dagenham deep pile, there are still no real clues. Obviously, it's fast. I mean, anything with a two-litre turbocharged engine pumping out 212 brake horsepower isn't going to mooch around like a Saturday shop girl. But it doesn't have the same straight line oomph as a Subaru Impreza. In fact, from 0 to 100 miles an hour, this is two seconds slower. The reason why it was so fast round our track is simple. 
This thing corners like it's in a cartoon. Between the front wheels, there's a new type of differential. I won't bore you with how it works, but I will tell you this. You can turn into any corner at seemingly any speed, and the front just goes, poof, poof. There's no fuss, no drama, no understeer, just endless grip. It's rather like one of those American Marines in a Hollywood movie. No matter how suicidal the order, no matter how stupid, it just obeys. Sir, yes, sir! Run in front of all those enemy guns over there. Sir, yes, sir! Go around this hairpin bend at 150 miles an hour. Sir, yes, sir! And it gets away with it. That's the joke. It does go around hairpin bends at 150 miles an hour. I have never driven a front-wheel drive car that drives so well. I can't think of any car that grips so well. And yet this one is yours for less than £20,000. So once again, Ford has delivered a supercar for supermarket prices. This car does what all good RS Ford should do. It brings power to the people. I mean, look at the badges you get in this one tiny area. Brembo, RS, Alls Racing. In clothing terms, that's like going around in a pair of trousers that have been jointly designed by Oswald Boateng, Alexander McQueen and Paul Smith. So, a fantastic car in every way, then. No, afraid not. It's not the very firm ride. I don't mind the very firm ride. In fact, the only people who are going to mind the very firm ride are people with osteoporosis. And people who are old enough to have osteoporosis will never buy a car that has a steering wheel like this. Especially as it won't pick up Radio 2. The horror. I might have to listen to Radio 1. The radio and the ride, though, are nothing compared to what happens when you turn off a nice smooth A road like this and head for somewhere like On a bumpy, twisty road like this one, the differential causes the front wheels to squirm and writhe. It's awful. It's like riding around on an angry horse. That's not me making it duck and weave, it's doing it itself. Relax your grip or your concentration for a second on a rural road and you'll end up in a sheep. I used to have an Escort Cosworth. I'm a huge fan of RS Fords and I respect what they've done with this as a piece of engineering. It's brilliant. It's so good, in fact, that I'm going to let the cameraman take it back to the Top Gear bunker. And me, I'm going to go in the Subaru. Or, as they say in Wales, where, of course, they're allergic to vowels, the Subaru. What was wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it is that the diff, OK, when you accelerate, say, to pull out to overtake someone, you're going around a corner, and you give it full throttle, yeah. the diff just grabs the front wheels and you go in whatever direction they're pointing. You're joking. No, you no control. You just sit there and go, oh, I'm not, not strong enough to turn this wheel. And then, if you run over a camber change or even a white line, it grabs the wheels and pulls you the other way. It's like super torque steer. Yeah, so you lift off and then it goes, oh, I'm not doing that anymore. And you just <laughs> wobble about. Honestly, if you had one of these, OK, 
and then someone said, where do you work? You'd have to say, well, wherever it takes me. <laughs> the thing is, no dealers in the UK have got these as demos. So if you want to buy one, if you go into an RS, you know, I want to buy an RS Focus, but before I give you the money, I want to drive one, you can. But I saw an ad the other day, someone was saying, buy an RS Focus, what, 1,200, something, 1,200 quid off list. <laughs> no? Obviously, this is a bad plan. I can't see that happening. It wouldn't have been a Ford dealer, for sure, because talking to the Ford dealers, their Ford sold till March, April. That's probably a broker. And to be honest, that's a spoof ad. It's what we used to do all the time. Really? Yeah, advertise something you haven't got. The phone will be red hot. Oh, yeah, well, phone so he is... hasn't got any focuses to sell. I can't comment on the specific incident, but I'd be very surprised. Yeah, so how does it work? You phone up and say, I want the car. What's he going to say? Oh, thanks very much for phoning. Yeah, um, let me take your name and number. I'm very busy. I'll phone you back. Then they've got you. And then they'll phone you back. Oh, phone you about the RS phone. OK, right, OK. Um, take your credit card deposit and then we'll uh, phone you back with a chat, all this kind of stuff. Basically, all they want you to do is phone them. And then at that point, as it gets closer and closer to delivery, chances are they'll say, oh, well, actually, we've got a slight delay and that car's been put back. But I have got the option on another one, but it's going to be close to the list price. You're not going to lose the car for £1,000, are you? And that's it. You suck it in. What are you going to do? March, April, when they say, we've got your new car, but it's list price. You take it. You take it, because you go somewhere else and you're back of the queue again. Yeah. In the news this week, more news of Americans becoming very, very gullible. This is a bit worrying, actually. The pop I'm going to quote direct from the press here. The popularity of television broadcasts of live high-speed car chases has led to a dramatic rise in criminals trying to outrace pursuing officers. This is in Los Angeles. In other words, they're surprised that when you put these guys stealing cars and driving really fast on the telly, more people do it. No, you can buy a beeper and it goes off when a chase is happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because why? Well, I turn over and watch that. And the Americans are surprised that more people are stealing cars to this. They've actually got people, there are cases of offenders waving to helicopters, filming the pursuit and attempting spectacular... <laughs> Get a load of this! Oh, you know, the thing is, of course, they've got those big, powerful police cars. They wouldn't yeah. work here, I don't think, because it would be like your beeper going off. There's a medium-speed police chase. <laughs> Chapman and Astra. Anyway, other items in the news. Car news. Vauxhall. <laughs> I love Vauxhalls. <laughs> the one I particularly like is the Zafira. It's the sort of astracized estate thing with seven seats. You can fold the back seats into the boot. Well, now they've done it again with an even smaller one. It's called the Meriva. An unpronounceable, meaningless name. There it is. That's a Meriva. Only got five seats, but the ones in the back will fold into the floor completely, or you can take the middle one out. Oh, there's some shots of it here. Look, from the mo motor show, which is happening at the Neck Apparently in Birmingham. So, yeah. Lots Ooh. of cars. Look, they just fold into the floor and you can take the middle ones out. It's a fantastically clever piece of design. Vauxhall, hopeless at everything, but very good at seats. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. They're really... I would... Family cars, these are very good. Zephyr and that, very, very good. Maybe they should just make a range of furniture and forget the whole <laughs> car thing. <laughs> because your seats could fold into your floor in your living room exactly. and you'd have loads of space and then if loads of people came around you could fold them all out. That's no, a, that's, no, it is, it's a very good idea, Vauxhall seating in your dining room. Um, I've got a nice car coming up, Mazda RX-8 which is going to be glorious. It's a rotary engine again, which of course means it's only 1.3 and it develops 250 brake horsepower. Of course it's rope, yeah, no. So, well, it's, it, oh, no, it's a wankle thing, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wankle thing. <laughs> Just get the There's whole... There's nothing school funny thing. about wankle. <laughs> Wankle's cool! It says here that as a safety measure, a safety measure, the rear doors, because it's got these, these rearwards opening doors, mm. the rear doors can only be opened when the front doors are open. As a safety measure, which if you think mm. about it, mm -mm. 
that's not a safety measure. That's a really nasty design fault. Because <laughs> it's shiny side down in a ditch. You want to open all the doors pretty quick. <laughs> what I like is the optimism here. In the, in the press release, it says... <laughs> He's talking about the engine, right? With a name derived from the word Genesis, derived from, so not similar, they've called it the Renesis. <laughs> <laughs> Start with A. Uh, Enesis, no. Benesis. <laughs> Could have started with a P. Could have been bad, couldn't it? How close? you right. That close. The VW uh, Tuareg. Tw tw we did evolve a technique for actually saying. Yeah, yeah. Tuareg. Oh, really. <laughs> Can you not know? It's a, it's a Saharan tribe of people. The Tuareg. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but that's what it is. It's the... Tuareg. <laughs> the Tuareg. I'll tell you what it is. It's a, it's a Porsche Cayenne with the word Porsche crossed out and Volkswagen written in in crayon. The most amazing thing about that is a V10 diesel engine. Yeah. Oh, I've nodded off. <laughs> <laughs> just not said diesel. Oh. <laughs> That'll be fun. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Say the word diesel and my seat goes into recline mode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get that now. fixed again now. You need... Stop everything. At the NEC this week... As you stop everything, I'll tell you what I saw this morning. Go on. Ready? I saw a bus on the M4 bus lane. An actual bus lane? <laughs> First time in five years. It was, a, it, was a, it was an airport bus taking some stewardesses for a little light sex in London, but... <laughs> <laughs> it was a bus. Oh, that was... I can't... Splendid. It's a bus! You can see everyone crammed into those two lanes, been there for four and a half years. Finally, one comes. That's by. worth the money then. I mean, it's it's being used. That's yes, exactly. That's it's a million plus. quid that cost. Anyway, listen. The most important thing yes. of the week, apart from the bus, is MG. Okay, they have got a new car at the motor show this week. Here it is. God, it's smoking badly. It's like an <laughs> earlier. <laughs> anyway, Things this is got... it. Now, I think that is a fabulous-looking car. I think it's desperately, desperately ugly, but hey, that's my view. It you looks... know those glasses you wear occasionally? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you on no, this? I'm... Where are Jeremy's you on? there. There. <laughs> that's what lanky fella over there. Do you know. like it? Uh, uh, I'd have to see yeah. the flesh. You no. see, uh, you... There's too many grills. Look at it. That's something first... designed by a heating engineer. It is. It's, a, anyway, it's a fantastic looking plumbed. car. It's, <laughs> it's a fantastic looking car. Let's have a show of hands. Where are we? Here's a show of hands. Who thinks fantastic looking car? Who thinks it's ugly and got too right, many that's... radiator grills? <laughs> That's kind of a split, Jeremy. That's 50-50. Anyway, yeah, OK, well, I'm going to bring them round. Would you like to know about its engine? Yes. Yes? yes. Well, it's got a Mustang V8 under there. Not, no, it's not a very good engine, that. However, <laughs> you can get one standard tune, and there's about three different levels of tune, OK? You can get one, 410 horsepower. Wow. Well. Yeah, that's plenty. Oh, 65,000 yeah. pounds, 410. This is MG coming back. However, they are selling a range of accessories which will allow you to take that power up to... Anyone want to guess? 965 brake horsepower. <laughs> that's 100 more than Michael Schumacher has in his Ferrari. In, in an, an MG. MG. <laughs> in an MG. This is astonishing. Do you know what the... I mean, what staggers me about that car is they can't possibly have designed it in the time it's taken since BMW no. left. No, they, they must they, have. They must, they have, they must have, have had an underground production line that BMW, <laughs> when they were running it, never knew about. Yeah. What are they doing in the parade grounds? <laughs> oh, keeping I'm not doing anything like <laughs> 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 
What is this vaulting horse you have here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they locked underneath the stove. <laughs> <laughs> they had one that, and you're just about BMW leaving. You know, the day we have tried and we have failed with you people. Chill and they're right, still <laughs> on, mate. <laughs> Take care, be good, thanks for coming. Right. <laughs> right, get that V8, get the supercharger, get the nitrous, we'll get some going here. Let's <laughs> finally get it started. They had that lot, all, all those cars they've done. The ZTs and the Easy. ZRs and the ZSs. They had that lot ready to go as soon as BMW were out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Good on them. Right, um, I feel the need for some science coming on now, OK? Now, how many times in our lives are we going to have to watch some insane loon jumping over buses on a motorbike, you know, the buffer wrap? It would be much more interesting, rather than jumping buses in a bike, big wow, to see how many bikes you can jump with a bus. So we did. We must nearly all of us remember, in 1978, Eddie Kidd, legendary stunt motorcyclist and the inspiration behind a million scuffed elbows and bent push bikes, jumped 14 buses. But we wanted to do it differently. We wanted to see what would happen if you jumped a bus over 14 bikes. Now, that would be something. 14 bikes, that's about 30 feet. OK, Eddie Kidd's jump was nearer 200 feet, but then he wasn't doing it in a bus. It's a 1970s Daimler fleet line, 11 litre engine in cream and green, the Ipswich livery, and it's a beauty. And that's the setter. We honestly have no idea what's going to happen. But then that's often the way with science. Sometimes you've just got to have faith in your ideas. <laughs> ah, the joy of prolonging that. Uh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it later on, OK? So we'll put you out of your misery. But I just thought, I mean, how many bikes do you actually reckon it cleared? I reckon... A million. A million. No, <laughs> I reckon... I don't know this, actually. I reckon five. Five? OK. Let's have a, a couple more. More suggestions. <laughs> there were 14 there were 14, 14 there. It's a struggle. <laughs> When it went back and did him Three. again, that wouldn't count. Three. Right, well, look, we will take your bets over the next yeah, a few moments. We'll write some down, and, and you can win a, a <clears throat> something. Package of Werther's Originals. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Now, this down here is the Noble M12 GTO. Its plastic body is made in South Africa by a company that makes plastic replicas of ACs for the American market. It's then flown in an aeroplane to Leicestershire, where it's taken to a shed where a man called Lee fits it with a Mondeo engine. Not a particularly promising start, then. But it's not a bad car. It's not a bad car at all. It's quite a dainty looking little thing, but that huge wing on the back suggests it's no fairy cake. It's much the same story in here. It's very comfortable, 
lovely ride. I've got tons of space. I've got air conditioning, steering wheel adjusts. It's nicely trimmed. Look, they've even covered the roll cage in Alcantara. But listen. of the rebel base. <gasps> Sister! Obi-Wan was wise to hide this from me. What an extraordinary noise! Oh, I like that. Actually, that's the sound of two turbos which have been glued onto the Mondeo engine to give it a bit more punch. A lot more, actually. If you floor the throttle, there's a bit of a pause while the turbos build up, and then... Whoa! -ho -ho -ho! 0 to 60. Takes 4.4 seconds, and then it'll wheeze its way to 165 miles an hour, which it's doing now! This is a but actually, it's not the power or the looks which set the Noble apart. It's the way it goes round corners. You've probably heard people prattling on about the... Ferrari 355 or the Lotus Elise, well, probably heard me prattling on about them, actually, but this is in a different league. It doesn't feel like the steering wheel is connected to the tyres by anything so mundane as mechanics or engineering. It's like driving using the force. Use the force, Jeremy, use the force. <laughs> and it absolutely will not understeer. There's just tons and tons and tons of grip, and then when it does let go, it's the back, which just gently, calmly steps out of line. You know, I've driven some pretty good cars in my time. Well, to be perfectly honest, I've driven every car in my time, but this, as far as handling is concerned, purely as a driver's car, I think it's my favourite. I really do. <laughs> I don't know another car like this. Just so love it. I shall go after Skywalker. Get me my noble. <gasps> it's better than stuff costing ten times as much. Forty thousand pounds? It's a bargain. Now, you may have noticed in that film just there that the brake lights were flicking on and off all the time. That wasn't me left foot braking. I don't know how to left foot brake, and if I tried, I'd crash. That was, so there's obviously a loose connection. And there are some other things wrong with it. Look at this, for instance. To open the front or the back, you need a screwdriver. Then we've got the window. That's Noble's idea of down. And you should see its turning circle. Right, this is a, well, the V word, the double V word, in fact, doing a U-turn. There we are, that's how much space it needs. Here's the Noble, full lock, and... Oh, Lord. <laughs> that's not completely brilliant, is it? You need Belgium to turn round in. <laughs> 
Jeremy, stop it. That's dirty. It's also not very nice to look at, actually. Seriously, apart from the turning circle, which is disastrous, is it really that good? Yes. Do we all like really? it? Yes. Yeah. Everyone? Anyone not like it? Fair Fair enough, it's fantastic it's car. It's good. Well, every fast car that we test here is going to go around our test track and set a lap time so we can evaluate them all against one another and it's all fair so the stig drives them. The times go up there on our power car lap time board. So let's see what the stig did with it. The problems of the British weather. Look at that track. It's absolutely soaking wet. But the stig has no fear at all as he heads on down to that nasty little jump just before the first corner. Really unsettles a bad chassis, but it won't unsettle that. Believe me. Look at him. And he goes, how fast was that? That was 100 miles 